Hello once again everyone. You know, when I first started the, my YouTube account, I didn't really do it with the intention of doing these like little video series or anything like that. Most of it was just to post the videos that, you know, I had recorded from stuff that I was working on to like forums and other stuff like that. So, uh, one of my like really earlier videos got pretty popular at one point and I had people like frequently messaging me and asking me questions, you know, about how I did it, how I went about like, you know, making it and all that stuff. So after like a long time of telling people that I would do a video on it, finally here to do a video on it. So today I'm going to show you guys how to quickly and easily make uh, schematics using poster board and macaroni for like quick prototyping. Um, I mean, you got to use some glue, but you, what do you mean? That's not what you came here to watch. What videos are supposed to be anyways? Oh, 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 you guys came here to see this thing. Yeah, so this is that 24 and 36 volt motor controller that I built some time ago and people have been asking me a lot of questions about it, you know, how I built it and all that stuff. And obviously the case, you know, I, I did not make. I repurposed it from a, an old Optimus amplifier, a two channel amplifier from Radio Shack from like back in the 90s or whatever, like early 2000s. So I'm gonna split this up into a few sections into like, I mean, into like a few videos. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I built it first of all, you know, how it's like um, all the casing and all that stuff. And then in a future video, I'll go and actually like explain the electronic side of it. So, and as you can see here, it used to have like the little Optimus logo right here, but that fell off a long time ago. And it's just a 50 watt two channel lamp. So, I mean, I, I made the, these uh, sides here and then this side here for like all the connectors and that stuff. Like I just, you know, custom made all that. But the rest of the casing, such as like the bottom part, and it actually still has the Optimus logo right there on this label. And, uh, you know, the casing, that's all. I, I kept that from the original lamp. So let's go ahead and take it apart and I'll show you guys, you know, how I went about doing all this. All right, so here we are on the chopping block now. So a few little things about this motor controller. When I built it, I wanted it to be a little bit flexible. You know, I wanted to be able to use either a 24 or 36 volt motor, as you can see on the switch there. But this switch doesn't actually have anything to do with how much voltage you're feeding to the motor. It has to do with the voltage from the batteries. So if you have it set on 24 volt, then if your batteries drop down past a certain point, then the motor controller shuts off to prevent damage to your batteries from, you know, discharging, over discharging them too much. And, you know, same thing with the 36 volt, you put it on 36 volt, assuming you're using a 36 volt battery, you know, it's the bank then when it drops past a certain voltage it'll shut off to prevent damaging your batteries from over discharge and then these connectors here which are for battery and the motor I wanted to also you know kind of make a little bit flexible so that I could you know easily remove the motors and the batteries you know if needed to to disconnect them so it's just a few nuts and some washers there's three connections there's the positive the negative and then the motor. So this is only, you know, to control the motor in only one direction. So once it's hooked up, you can only say go forward or something. I was originally intending this for to be used, you know, for like an electric go-kart or something. And I wanted it to be easy to mount, which is why I kept this bottom plate here. Oh, and going back to these connectors, the reason why it's just positive, negative, and motor is because the positive would connect would be connected to the motor at all times. So you'd connect the positive from the battery here and as, uh, also to the motor and then the negative to the battery here and then the negative to the motor here and uh, you just an on off switch and then this port right here is for the throttle and there's also a uh, it was meant to be like a for several interfacing several different things like the um, brakes so that if like you were stepping on the brake you couldn't at the same time hit the throttle and also for like a few other things which don't remember exactly what I meant it for off the top of my head right now. Oh, it, it also puts out, um, I believe I have it feeding directly off the battery voltage so I can like feed other things off of it. So on the bottom, like I said, just the plate. It's missing a screw here because uh, that, it kind of stripped a little bit. So that screw wouldn't hold in and these are just uh, screws from a computer just like computer case screws. So we got those three, this lifts right off, and inside we see the bottom of the circuit board. And uh, as you can see, I used a lot of 
like fill for these uh, traces because I wanted to keep them as beefy as possible because uh, this was meant to conduct a lot of current and I'm using I mean you're gonna see them on the other side but I'm using a total of 16 MOSFETs on there on the top and bottom and then just a bunch of like freewheeling diodes right here even though I think these MOSFETs already had like some diodes built in it's a little bit overkill to be honest but you know I wanted it to not blow like too easily or anything there's a couple mistakes I made with this and I'll show you guys what, what those are the that's getting dangerously close to touching the case there I could have sworn I had some standoffs oh they're on this side so these little rubber standoffs keep the board from touching the casing and it's just enough space to keep it you know anything from from touching what you're supposed to because like I said that nut right there looks like it's just about to touch that the back of the case here so these ends were just made using some sheet of some uh, sheets from a, a UPS that I took apart some time ago so nothing special going on there the only thing I did was paint them black so that they wouldn't look so kind of you know ugly with the that kind of off-white color but other than that I mean there's nothing really special about them so that's uh, one of the backs this, uh, it's, it's really thin metal which uh, kind of sucks because it's really flimsy the original stuff that was on here was actually something more like this and th this is actually one of the original plates from from this stamp like the ones that used to go on the sides here and I believe this is the yeah this is the input side so it's got the level you know the RCA inputs the high level inputs and this one's a little bit thicker so this is a little more sturdier but I mean it's not like it had to really support much so for the, the cover you know this kind of thin steel is it's okay I mean it works so here on the inside you can see like two large caps right here this is the positive lead coming in then we got these big aluminum plates here that the components are screwed onto. originally this was supposed to you know touch butt up against the the casing to help like dissipate heat but I kind of screwed up and as you can see it doesn't quite reach it's like they're just shy of making contact with the with the casing there so that's one of the things I screwed up on on the top there you can also see that I got some little rubber standoffs so that it you know keeps that side from you know going too high my original intention was having these uh, plates touch up against or butt up against the aluminum casing was that I was going to use a you know like a thermal pad like in between that and the casing and then on the side here I was going to use two I was going to thread the plate and use two screws to hold it tied up against the case so that the case you know would act as a heat sink because I would expect these MOSFETs to be the ones getting the the warmest during operation but obviously that didn't happen so it just kind of sits as is and another thing I screwed up on was that this board was actually supposed to be a little bit longer on each side and they kind of like did like two little wings and what those were supposed to do was they were supposed to fit into these channels up here where these screws actually are so this was supposed to be flipped around but because I did not I forgot to leave those on and I ended up cutting them off it was just wide enough to fit in here and so I ended up like you know uh, placing the board in here upside down versus uh, compared to how I originally wanted it and so yeah so this bottom was supposed to be up here and then you know the top of this was supposed to you know like be accessible from the from the bottom here but since I screwed that up I couldn't put it in the other direction so I ended up having to do it this way so you know that would have meant that all this was you know kind of flipped so the only thing holding it in now is this one screw right here I already undid the other ones and then this will allow everything to kind of slide out from inside and it should just come right out it's a little tight but it comes out so that's the case itself you can see where the original power devices like the amplifiers themselves the little modules used to be there was one right there and there's one on the other side other than that you know it's just you no know, basic aluminum case it's I mean it's not bad it's if I could have made it work the way I wanted it to you know it would have been nice As you can see those are the channels right there so that's where I originally intended the circuit board to slide into but since I screwed that up I ended up doing it the other way around I mean maybe in the future you know I can make another one or whatever and reuse this case and just repurpose the components from the board but 
this is the board itself it's not complete how I wanted it to be as you can see there's still some connections here that go to nothing um, almost everything else is hooked up though so we got the two big caps right here we got banks of MOSFETs there the diodes and I had to label these so I knew where they were supposed to go a uh, big uh, I believe that's like 8 gauge wires going from the uh, contacts up here in the front to the board it's got my positive here negative the blue ones for the motors those are bolted directly onto these these plates and uh, I'm gonna have to remove these from the front so you can see how these were made I couldn't find any already made connectors that I could use you know that would be like panel mount like this with something that was you know big enough to handle like big gauge wires so what I ended up doing is I got these uh, steel hex head screws and then I cut out a piece of uh, acrylic that would kind of act as an insulator right here in the back and I did the same thing in the front except that I rounded that one off to just make it look a little bit nicer and then so removing these nuts from the front here will actually allow me to undo this whole assembly here there's some uh, got some washers got some of these uh, little locking washers here once these all come off as you can see there's another piece of acrylic back there but I mean you can see that already to begin with and to keep it all insulated from touching the metal this is actually stuck on really well now <laughs> from being in there so long oh boy I thought this was gonna be a little easier all right so that was a little bit more of a pain to remove than I was uh, hoping or actually remembered but it's out now so this piece in the front here is just a little piece of acrylic I cut out and drilled the holes into that's uh, to insulate the front to insulate in the middle I cut out these uh, actually I punched them out also out of, out of acrylic these uh, sort of like little insulating rings and as you can see there's one in there the other ones uh, stayed on here they were supposed to be glued onto this back piece but these fell off so and these just compressing this from being in there over time do they kind of mold it over the the threads on this on the screws so there's another one right there and they're kind of crude but I mean they work and yeah like I said they were originally glued onto this back piece here so this when it went through the back it was the one that was supposed to hold those in place and just you know pressure has been keeping them there over time so there's the other one if we can focus on it you can see right there so yeah that's what keeps these insulated from the rest of the case and this is the positive or the negative going out to the motor as you can see I had to remove the screws from the, the sides here so these uh, two uh, aluminum bars were threaded right there to accept a couple screws that would hold those in place this is the voltage selection switch so all this does is change a resistor in one of the uh, sections of the uh, board here as we'll see later on uh, this is just the the port that goes to all the other stuff that goes to this connector and that goes to the board there and as you can see I've kind of have it labeled what certain pins do right here on the board so I wouldn't forget what they were when I was uh, building it so it's just ground the battery voltage in and it's got a 5 volts out or actually it's got the battery voltage out 5 volts out the hall sensor or potentiometer whichever one I want to use and then the one for the brake so yeah that was all I had included on there I thought it was more than that but I guess not um, board is actually very simple and as I'll show you guys in the other video this was actually modeled after a cheap one of those little Chinese uh, little cheap Chinese uh, sc electric scooters I just uh, looked at it how it was built and all that stuff and I just kind of designed around it this is a 5 volt regulator here that I had uh, built separately and then I just uh, used that as part of the board. The reason I made it separate was because I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to use when I was uh, building this and then eventually I settled on doing that. So it's wired there just to accept kind of like a regular 5 volt regulator but I ended up using a little switching regulator instead because I wanted it to go up to, you know, I forgot what this one goes up to, it's like 40 volts or whatever like that input. So that works pretty well for this it gets a little warm but it's not too bad so I mean other than that that's uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at here um, as I mentioned uh, we're gonna be hooking this up to power and then I'll you know show you guys how you know in operation what we're kind of looking at as far as uh, waveforms go and all that stuff so 
as you can see all these are just they're only the gates of all these uh, MOSFETs are just fed by like one wire going from here to there so the, the whole circuit itself is actually very small the only thing I really had to do was add more MOSFETs and then beef up the the driver for the MOSFETs because the original transistors that the the scooters use you know they're just little tiny transistors they're not really meant to drive a bunch of like MOSFETs at once so I just used these two other ones that I actually took from an RC car circuit board and they actually worked pretty well I had to add a resistor because hooking it up directly to the power was kind of making these get really hot and at one point I had actually put like some little aluminum plates here to act as heat sinks but once I added the resistor it limited current a little bit to the point where these don't get as hot and it still functions how it's supposed to so that worked pretty well on most of this I didn't really use a whole lot of calculations or anything I just kind of went with the kind of a brute force approach but I mean it, it works okay and if any of you have seen the original video you'll have seen that I was actually I was using this motor to test it out with and this is a 36 volt uh, it's supposed to be like a 500 watt motor and it's I mean it's pretty it's pretty beefy it, it's um, it's all right it's it'd be really work really good for a small go-kart so you know maybe in the future I'll, I'll end up finally building something with it I just really never ended up doing much with it but this is a, it's a pretty nice motor but this isn't what it was originally meant for. What that motor controller was originally meant for was something like this. This is a modified starter from a, you know, like a, a car engine. And the reason why it's so beefy, or I mean the motor controller is so beefy is because one of these requires a lot of current to get it to run compared to that other small, or other that other 500 watt motor. So these take like a, really high amperage and you know in turn it also provides a lot of power but I have never actually hooked up that motor controller to this starter motor or at least not yet we're gonna do it for the first time ever on video not right now because I gotta put the controller back together so we can actually like you know hook it up but we'll actually try it out I hope I have a power supply that can handle this because I don't know if I have batteries. I'm gonna have to look and see if I can find some. If I don't, I, I do have a 24 volt power supply somewhere that's uh, somewhat beefy, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to, to drive this properly, but we'll find out. So we'll leave it here for now. I mean, you saw how it was kind of built. In the future video, like I said, we'll go into more of the actual electronic side of it, how it works. And um, so hope to see you guys there and uh, thanks for watching.